even then. He's still there and he's being persecuted while he he's there. He, he is. shouldn't even be there. I know. I fully agree. And and because of that, the problem is due process has been, you know, you were talking earlier about the courts. And let's not play politics about it. The courts have been wiped out in terms of due process. But the voice of the people can still resonate and it still has an effect. And so, yes, the courts, the jails, the justice system, all the way to the Supreme Court, it's corrupted. And for the, for the most part, the rule of law has gone in our courts. And people need to recognize that. It's important they know that. But that doesn't mean they just get away with abusing people however they want, because there's a lot of people watching. And so even though what I've learned about these tyrants, even though they're lawless, they're afraid too. And so in, even though they abuse, they're also careful in certain areas because they don't want to they don't want to lose the message either and they don't want to push people too far and what's happening is they're pushing and pushing and pushing and it's affecting people in this nation because of what what people like you guys are doing and if we die when do they when do they get their their trial in court when well, do they get to stand in front of courts you know here's a story when i was getting i was i was arrested about a year ago in a courtroom for standing up to a judge because she refused due process and to follow the constitution and they dragged me and my dad grand out of that courtroom and they hauled us off to jail. And I remember during the course of their shenanigans of the kangaroo court down in Douglas County, I, I went up to the prosecutor's office in Waterville and cause I was thinking, all right, you know, these people are wicked, they're lawless. And I, I, I charged into the prosecutor's office, not with a gun or anything, not threateningly, but, but they were freaking out because, you know, I wasn't supposed to be in there and he was calling the sheriff and I started reading to him about out of Proverbs about the six thing God things God hates, the abuse of the wicked, those that shed innocent blood. And I said, you, sir, are accused of corruption in the court of heaven, and you will stand to answer for it. And if you go back to the founding of this country, men like John Locke taught, he said, you know, these are the rules of law. And sometimes, sometimes they fail us, but there's always the appeal to heaven. Okay. Okay, so we're, tr we're trying to get Michelle back in, and so I'm watching for her, but the, what they've done out here to, to us is it looks like the FBI okay. put my phone number out, and so they're ringing the phones off the hook, and I have to be really careful. The word's getting out, Ben. Oh, the word's getting out. I mean, look, the, it's, it was on Drudge Report. It was on Fox News. It was on Newsmax. It was on CBS. I mean, they were, they were calling Nathan in here who was running the phones for me, and my family's been in here helping too, and they were trying Thank to – Thank they're right here. They hear you. So thank you. You're welcome. You know where was Fox News and all these other ones when all this was happening? They were busy whoring for a corrupt government. Exactly. But we still set the example. We still set the example of peace. We don't. We don't hate. We show love. And and see that was the whole thing when this all started. They were they were talking about armed occupiers and militia and all this. You know, yes, we had our Second Amendment rights with us, which my husband and I, we carry our weapons with us no matter where we go. We always have them. But nobody got hurt right. until Lavoie was killed. You know, they demonized us, and they were waiting for a bloodbath. Well, when everything went down after Lavoie, well, the bloodbath opportunity was over, so they all left. And now right. they're probably all back because there's an opportunity here that, you know what? These people might get killed, and it might be a really good story. Yeah, and, and the thing is, though, but here's the beauty of this. You know, you guys called me earlier. I put out videos last week when David left a message. We've been putting out, you know, the Bundy Ranch has been putting out lots of videos. The message is getting out without the media. In America, the patriots, the principled, we need to recognize that when our message is peace and liberty, even though the media is not, we just need to be the news media. We don't need right. a corrupt news media. And if they want to carry right. the message, if they want to spread the word, that's fine. If they want to get on board so that they can preserve the liberty of their children, we welcome them right. anytime. But we don't need a corrupt news media to carry the message. They don't even realize how they're destroying it for America and their children and their children's children. You know, we had uh, reporters in here that wanted to do news stories on us, but because they didn't use the words militia or armed, their editors killed the stories. Right, because they wanted to portray uh, portray the people on the refuge as violent men when in reality they were right. peaceful men, and the government right. was the one. In all cases whatsoever, it, the government instigated the violence. And look, I mean, yeah. Sandy, this is nothing new. I just was working on a video. I, I hear from, from Jeff Winehouse 
and Schaefer Cox from prison. You know, Jeff Winehouse is another patriot that they tried to assassinate the FBI a few years ago, and they gunned him down. And when he didn't die, instead of instead of the FBI and state police being prosecuted, they sent him to prison and and convicted him, even though he did nothing. He never drew a gun, nothing. And there's even a video of it. But here's the thing: he calls me, and his voice even gets out from prison. Yeah, he has his frustrating days. But he calls me almost every week, and he prays with me, and I and I help, in, and I work on things to try and get the message out and expose his case. There's other people like Schaefer Cox. There's Shiler Barbeau over in Washington. There's James Fair up in Okanagan. There's patriots all over the place that are being abused by an unjust justice system. But there's more and more people recognizing that abuse and saying we have Good. to do something about it. Good. Hey, now, now, hey, Sandy, if if I go t if I go silent for just a minute, it's because I'm trying to merge Michelle back in. We're having a hard time getting her in here. But as soon as we, uh, as soon so it, so I, I, if if I'm gone for you know more than thirty seconds, then try and call back. But if it's just for a few seconds, I'm probably just trying to patch her in. Okay, can I read you something before you do that? Yeah, I, yeah, go for it. Okay, the the definition of a militant. Having or showing a desire or willingness to use strong or extreme and sometimes forceful methods to achieve something. A disposition to dominate, often in disregard to others' rights. Right. Which is not what you're doing. Which is not what we're doing. Here's the definition of a patriot. One who loves and defends his or her country. Right. Modern day USA describes someone that refers to themselves as a constitutionalist. Right, which they label as a bad thing, but really it's 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 someone saying, I believe in my neighbor's rights. I believe in loving my neighbor. Exactly. So and that's the thing. I mean, that's the message. The message of of stopping this tyranny, stopping the war the war that's on rural America, the attack of government on liberty, and that's the people's job. The, the Constitution, remember, the framers set up the Constitution after much debate, and it was set up not as a way to grant us rights. It was the alarm that the wall of liberty has been breached. It was to remind us of our rights. Yes, that we have rights, that we don't need licenses or, or uh, const uh, concealed carry exactly. licenses and things like that, because that makes it sound like like it's a privilege to have that, and it's not a it's privilege. It's not a privilege. It's, it's a, a right. right. It's a God-given right. You're absolutely right. You know, we had a rally here in Olympia. They tried to pass this ridiculous law called I-594 about a year ago, and and me and some other patriots organized a rally. They made it a felony here in Washington State for us even to hand a, a gun to our friend, and we said no, uh -huh. we're not going to have it. And so, you know, despite the fact that we, America it doesn't stand up enough. There, people are starting to stand. So we organized this rally, and it wasn't a protest. We put 3,000 armed people on the Capitol in Olympia, on the Capitol grounds. We were, despite the fact of what they told us, we refused to get a permit for the event. We refused to get permission. We said, we're coming. 3,000 people came together. They violated that law and nullified it. They said, this is not law. We won't obey this law. And you know what? They were all peaceful. When it ended, they went home and there wasn't so much as a piece of litter on the ground because they were there to defend their children's rights and to make peace. Correct. And that's what we were doing here. That's exactly what we were doing here. Only the problem is, is that they didn't give us time to clear out. When they killed the boy, everybody panicked and left and left, left the place just a disaster. So now they're going to come in and they're going to accuse us of wrecking the place. And yet, while we were here, they were cleaning up rat turds and mess that the BLM didn't even care about for the artifacts. Cleaned up the buildings. They had explosives next to heaters. You know, how is right. that safe? Well, and then they pretended like the patriots who were there making peace and cleaning up the place and trying to restore the land to beneficial use, like Ammon talked about. They pretended that they were the ones messing things up. And in reality, the ones who hadn't been caring for the land was the government. Yeah. Okay. Now listen. Hey, Kevin. Yes. Go ahead. This is Sean. Sean. Um, I talked with Bill, the FBI guy from the Bullhorn. Um, he said Michelle would be here tonight and asked if we were willing to meet with her. Good. I said I would meet with her if she was able to come in here, but we wanted to wait till tomorrow when Reverend Graham was here to turn ourselves in. Right. Um, and then we'll be in both at the 
the checkpoint. Um, okay. What we're going to ask for, as they said, they wouldn't escalate anything and they'd wait till then. So what we're going to probably ask for is to go back to our tent where it's warm and hold the night up there. Right. Um, and I just hope that they keep their word. We'll keep our word and we'll clear this up in the morning. So I would like to hear from Michelle. Is she supposed to call back in? Yeah, could you hold on? What they've done is they put my number out publicly so that my phone's getting spammed, but I'm going to try and add her back in now. So listen, I'm going to try, I'm going to go silent for a minute to try and get her. If, if the call drops, call me back because I'm having a hard time getting through to you guys. So just hold on a minute. But if I disconnect, you can ring back. Okay. Okay. I want you. I want you to know that it's taking. It's going against everything we believe in, but we're going to do it, and we're going to leave our weapons, our personal weapons, in our own personal vehicles. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave them unlocked and leave the keys on the seat because they got to go through that and inventory everything. I don't know if we'll ever get them back, but you know we we have our own vehicles here, so we have our possessions in there, okay. and then we're going to. Walk one by you know, one after another with the flag and turn ourselves in and meet you and Reverend Graham at the checkpoint. Okay, okay. You know what, Sean? I have to tell you, and I promise you. And we're on we're on live stream. So um, one thing that you learn about me is a promise made is a promise kept. I, I appreciate you, that. Period. I promise you that I will see all of our American patriots through this. And we will definitely, and I have to also just tell you, and we're live stream. do you know you have definitely put a call to action? There are all of those, all of the legislators that stand with you from, from your, from your state, from many states, but we got Arizona and Idaho and Washington and Nevada and Wyoming. Um, they're all coming there. We're all meeting there in Burns tonight. We are all coming to you. So understand, you have elected officials that are listening to this movement to the united states constitution so i want you to know what you've done you have done good sean you and jeff and dave and sandy you guys are making history tonight and know and know and know and know and know that well, that's know that yeah you know which representatives are coming from idaho yeah, it's Judy, it's Heather, and another, I, I'm on the phone, so I don't, I can't open the uh, phone with the text with the names. But these are these are your people, and um, so so I just want to let you know that this live stream um, was just brilliant, David Fry, and um, and with Americans watching and understanding. And we're going to basically ask America to stand with us to stop the overreaching federal government. And you guys did it. I want you to understand you four in that refuge have, have something to be very proud about. Of what, what, and the simple, simple, simple disobedience and, and free speech and what you guys have accomplished is amazing. So let's just keep it. Um, let's just keep it as, as what you've just told me, and I just have to tell you, I'm with you. Okay? Um, so how are, are you guys hungry? Did you eat? Are you, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to let the FBI know that we're going to go back to our tent so we can stay warm for the night. Okay. And we're going to have our weapons just to keep everyone honest. Okay. I know an armed society is a polite society. I understand. And then in the morning, we'll uh, once we get word that you and Reverend are at the checkpoint, we will proceed with our surrender. Okay. And I am here. I am here. Um. Okay. I am here. So just know that, and know that uh, you're winning the hearts across America, Sean. 